All right, Max, first off, thank you so much for taking the time out of your busy day. First off, where where are you? Uh, located in San Diego, California. Nice. <laughs> awesome. And so why did you get hey, into freelancing? Um, I really just wanted to try something on my own. So before then, I was working on like a bunch of agencies, worked at a couple of companies and labels and, and, and you know, just small startups. And I, I kind of saw how that was run. So I kind of wanted to mimic that, but do it on my own versus working for someone else. Gotcha. And, and what is, I mean, tell me about the process. Like, how did you go from Max pre-freelancer to Max freelancer? Uh, I mean, I honestly, it was just the jump. It was the hardest part was actually committing to doing it. Um, I wanted to freelance for a while before I actually did freelance. Um, I actually didn't even do it on the side while I was working in nine to five. I just literally just quit and jumped all in, um, knowing that, you know, if everything failed, I could probably go back to finding the nine to five. Um, but I just wanted to try it. Awesome. And what is your what does your freelance business look like? Like I'd love to see the details of what does a client look like, what does a project look like? Yeah, so I would say half my business is in um social and Google advertising. Um and my other half of my business is handling Squarespace website design. Primarily I work with um small businesses across the board, so restaurants, retail, um, consultants, GPAs, uh I come from the music industry, so I still work with some artists on advertising and website design, but I would say it's pretty evenly spread across the board with like all my clientele is. I would say uh, they're definitely on the small side, um, so I'm not working with like big um, brands or anything like that because I just kind of find more powerful results when I can work with a small company and really kind of offer my insight and not have to work up the chain of command. Um, and it really varies. I would say a lot of times I'm doing advertising and, and design at the same time. Um, but since COVID has happened, I would say a lot of my advertising has been paused and I'm switched over to primarily design um, focus. Gotcha. And, and where are some of these clients located? Are they near you? Or are they in the U.S.? Are they outside of the U.S.? Where, where do you see the distribution? Yeah, I would say right now all my clients are U.S. based, um, but they're all over. I have a few in San Diego, I have a few in Northern California, I have a couple back east. Um, they're really all over the place, but all uh, states so far. Gotcha. And what, like the client, the person that you actually deal with, is that the owner of a company? Is that the head of marketing? What is there? Is there a similarity in that that role? Yeah, and so I, I would say that's probably why I like to work with the small businesses because I'm actually dealing with the owner or at least the second in charge, and I don't have to necessarily go from just a manager up to someone else, up to someone else, up to someone else. So um, I, I would say 99% of my clients I'm dealing directly with the owner, which I love. Yeah, no, that's 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 one of the beauties of freelancing, absolutely. And yeah. so, what are what are some of the the coolest and and proudest projects you've had? Um, I mean, the coolest ones have been just on the design side have been like really just either creating a project from scratch where we were brainstorming ideas and inspiration, and we were able to just like complete the design that you know the client loved, and now they you know, use on a daily basis. Um, advertising, I would say my my best projects are ones that we can spend money and show them a return on ad spend and show them how advertising works and why they should continue to do it um, is amazing. I, I work with a health coach right now in um, Massachusetts and she, uh, our goal is to, you know, grow her email list to hopefully nurture them through the system where they become paid members um, and I've been working with her for a little over three months now and just being able to grow her list by like 50% has been amazing. And it's, it's awesome to see it continue to grow every month. That's awesome. That's uh, where in Massachusetts? 
Um, I actually don't know the town where she is, but it, uh, the program is all online, which is pretty cool. Um, so we're able to capture like everyone, you know, all over the world. And, and it was actually really set up. It was, this was set up like years ago. I, I recently joined a couple months ago, um, you know, talking about COVID and everything, since everything is online, video-based programming, nothing really got affected on that end. I wonder, so, so what are the things that you've learned um, that have really, really contributed to a good project versus a bad project in terms of the things that you can control? Um, I mean, honestly, a good project always stems from just being on top of communication and being transparent with the client. Um, I've, every bad project I've had has been because there's just been a terrible lapse of communication. <laughs> so expectations weren't talked about either from my end or their end. And it just, you know, it just wasn't discussed properly or scoped out properly. Um, and yeah, I mean, a lot of times it's just me being how I've been able to have, you know, good projects lately. Um, it's just been like me being transparent from the jump, let them know exactly what can be done, what can't be done. Um, I'm a huge fan of under promising over delivering as well. So I don't like to promise the client, you know, everything, because if we don't achieve it, then it's on me. And I just, it's just not going to be a good start to relationship. So yeah, under promising over delivering and just being on top of communication and just being transparent too, like, because a client wants something or be, because a client is like asking for something doesn't mean it necessarily needs to be done. Um, but you do need to list out your reasons why or give your reasoning behind something. And I wonder, how do you build that trust with the client? Because day one, you're not going to say, thanks for the request, that's wrong. But how do you build that trust so that you can have that relationship where, you know, you really yeah. are able to push back? I mean, honestly, it just comes with time. Um, you know, as you work with a client for so long, you just build that relationship and that trust. But honestly, it's just from the jump too. Like you don't, I would say too, like when you're starting out with a new client relationship, you want to be yourself, right? So you want to like speak how you speak. You want to um, do the work how you do the work, you know? So it's just very about being transparent and being yourself from the jump. And if, if, if you are very adamant on this is how I do a business. This is how I communicate. These are the hours I work. This is when you can reach me. Um, the client will respect that. Otherwise, those boundaries or that communication will be set. And it's just going to be a mess to try to get that aligned further down the road. Yeah. And, and that's awesome. So what are some of the ways, the best ways to get new clients? For example, is it just sending a million emails? Is it LinkedIn? Is it a platform? What do you think are some of the, the best ways freelancers should, should be looking for work? Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm a huge fan of LinkedIn, um, personally, just because you can seriously reach out to anyone in your in the world who does what you do and people who you look up to and just other like-minded people. So it's just like the coolest network out there, in my opinion. Um, and it's a good way to find jobs and, and you know, freelance opportunities and, and so on. Um, but other than that, like, honestly, I would say referrals and word of mouth are always going to be a huge part of the business um, because... When you do good work for someone, hopefully they are, you know, spreading your, um, helping you do the marketing by spreading your uh, services to their network. Um, so, but in order to like really tap into getting referrals and word of mouth and stuff, a lot of times too, like you might just want to take on a project, um, especially if you're starting out from, you just want to build up your portfolio, maybe it's you know, reach out to a brand and just being like, hey, I'm a Squarespace designer. I want to redo your site, um, but I know you might not want to pay me, so let me just do X, Y, and Z. And if you like it, we can move forward. If not, you know, at least you have some sort of, you have a new page or you have new, you know, anything. It's, it's kind of like trying to just get in where you fit in. Um, and then also um, reach out to other designers or people in your industry and making a connection with them, seeing if they need help on anything and how you can help them. Um, a lot of times it's a great way to find projects because there's going to be a lot of people, a lot of times people see them as competition, but the other people in your uh, ecosystem aren't necessarily competing against you because 
they're just working for themselves and they're working on their own brand and their own clients. But a lot of times they get too busy where they don't, they have to turn down the work, but they don't have anyone else to, to push the work to. So it just kind of dies from there. So if you can able to set up that relationship, it's just an easy way for you to get clients without really having to do much work. Yeah, so I'd love to just drill a little bit deeper in, into that, exactly what you're talking mm -hmm. about there of, of people that have an overflow of projects or even not an overflow, but it's a skill set that you have that they want to bring in. I'd love to just drill deeper into that. Yeah, just like how that works or? Yeah, yeah. And, and who are these people? So you mentioned they're fellow freelancers. How do you meet them? How do freelancers know to, to build those relationships? Like, I'd just love to hear your take on what it's been like, what it's been like for you. Yeah, I mean, I mean, for me, honestly, it was just like Googling other Squarespace designers, looking at people's portfolios and seeing what I like and what I don't like. And then the people who I aligned with in terms of I, I think my design is similar to theirs or I like their clientele, I would just reach out to introduce myself if we were based in San Diego or, or wherever, you know, if they were local, we would grab coffee or, or something. But if not, we would just, you know, get on the screen share, get on a phone call and just kind of talk about exactly what we're talking about, right? Like freelancing, how is your business? What do you do? Um, and then just build that relationship because a lot of times uh, people don't do that. Like I would, you'd be surprised, but I would say it, it's a rare occurrence for um, to, uh, to do that, to build your network, but it, it works really well because um, like I said, a lot of times people have just overflow of work or just some people want to build partnerships. And so it's a great way of doing that. Um, and I've done that throughout the years. And so just by doing that, you know, um, for four or five years now, I've built really good relationships, um, been able to get client projects and, and then, and vice versa, hand off my client projects to some people who they do a better job at certain areas. Um, and also make money too, because yeah, one thing is that, you know, you can set up referral systems, right? Where if they send you a client, you can, um, pay them 10% or 5% or whatever you you uh, agree on and then vice versa if uh, I send them the clients the same thing um, but it also just works to like just expand your network um, and to get into different markets um, and yeah I mean it's just awesome I highly recommend uh, for new freelancers to do that yeah it's it's crazy. We talk about networking all the time, right? Like when you're in college, and you're in college, all the workshops are about you have to network, you have mm -hmm. to network, and then you jump into freelance, and people are like, "Oh, you're on your own, right? It's pull up yourself by the bootstraps, and it's just you." And eh, not quite. Really, it's a result of the network that you have. And what is so? Do you ever go together on teams? Like, do you ever have freelance teams uh, working together on a project? Yeah, I mean, I would say even with my. Um with my client in Massachusetts who I help ads with, like they brought me on as the ads person, but there's freelancers that are helping with the email marketing. Um, there's freelancers helping you with the whole strategy. So it's kind of like an actual, you know, team at a, at a workplace. Um, but we have like, you know, weekly check-ins with the client. Um, and we, we have certain hours allocated per month um, that we're working on this. So um, the whole, you know, connotation of freelancers are always alone working on stuff. While that could be true if you just want to do that, um, then great, but that isn't always the case. And you can always find people that you can team up with on certain projects, um, especially if you don't handle those services, but still want to offer that. Um, for me, for example, right, I don't really do any graphic design. I don't do um, email marketing or um, social media management, but those are all areas where I have people or I can refer people to if I don't want to handle the work or I just manage the work um, from the client who I've already built a relationship with and I just outsource it to those people who I, I know and trust. Gotcha. Gotcha. That's awesome. Okay. Last sort of real question. Mm -hmm. Knowing what you know now, what are those one to two things you would tell a new freelancer? Um. Well, one thing I would definitely stress is that uh, freelancing isn't just about doing uh, the work, right? You know, when I jumped into freelancing, I'm like, I'm just going to do design and marketing all day. And this is my whole, you know, I'm just going to find clients. And, and this is, that's not the case. I would say 
you know, a big chunk of your days are going to be admin stuff, um, unless you ever find someone that you want to outsource that work to. Um, but I highly recommend you handling it in the beginning, just because you, I want you to get like a sense of how this works. Um, so no one, you know, like screws you over. Um, so yes, uh, handling like your business development. So reach out to new clients. Who do you have in the pipeline? Uh, who are you prospecting and talking to, to like sign them, um, you know, hopefully for the future, um, client just also client management so just speaking to clients and making sure that they're happy and everything is good um finances so making sure that you're invoicing and expenses and and saving money for taxes i would say huge thing is people just not realizing that you get a check for three thousand dollars doesn't mean that that's a whole three thousand it means like no you have to put you know in california you have to put 25 percent of that away for taxes um and so you have to you know be smart and and do that otherwise at the end of the year or if you pay quarterly taxes you're going to be scrambling and it's going to be a stressful situation so number one is definitely just get the whole just know that you're going to have to run the whole aspects of your business and just be prepared for that um it's not just the work the work is in all honesty a very small part of the of the day um it's, you know, I would say it's 20% of my day. The rest of it's everything else. Um, and two is, is that um, don't be afraid to, you know, reach out and, and ask questions about from people who have already been doing this for a while. Um, one, people love talking about themselves. So uh, they'll be more than happy to, you know, grab coffee with you if you're local or just get on a call or a screen share. Um, and just ask for advice, you know, like there's no, there's no real reason that you have to, um, do it from scratch and make all these mistakes if other people have made them and you can learn from that. So I would highly recommend finding freelancers or people that you either look up to or have been doing this for a while and just ask them exactly what you're asking me now. Like what are, what are, you know, good steps to network? How do you do X, Y, and Z? What happens if you have a slow month? Like, and just kind of, you know, you don't have to take everything and use it on your own business, but it's it's something that will be good for you to have in your knowledge bank moving forward. That's it. That's awesome. Okay. Three lightning questions. You ready? Yes. First one, uh, favorite Southern California surf spot. Surf spot. Um, well, there's one um, by us where... Uh, uh, we live in San Diego. It's actually called Dog Beach because um, this is a whole beach for dogs. <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's the coolest thing. We actually take my uh, dogs there sometimes. Um, but it's, yeah, it's, it's like, that's probably like the best place for like newbie-ish beginning people. Did you enroll your dog in the dog surfing championship? I, I can No, but, one. <laughs> both, both my dogs are afraid of water, so. Okay, second question. Favorite book? Book? Uh, God, I got so many. Um, you can say two or three. Thanks. All right, well, one is um, Shoe Dog by Phil Knight. So it's a whole biography about how he started Nike and just the struggles that he went through and everything. Um, two is um, Seven Spiritual Laws. Um, Three is, I don't know, I would just go two. <laughs> I have to read like one or two books a month and I'm actually about 30 pages from reading, uh, finishing this one, it's an accidental president. Oh. So it's Harry Truman, how we became president because FDR died and um, it's just, and while he was president, it was like the craziest stuff because that's when World War II ended. That's when they launched the atomic bomb. Um, and that's when like, kind of like the Soviet war, the Soviet Union uh, formed and how the U.S. kind of broke off from them and became, it became more of like a fight versus an ally. Um, so yeah, I'm almost done with this one. So I'm really, I'm really stoked. <laughs> that's awesome. Okay, and last one, favorite animal. Oh, um, well, dogs, but um, my spirit animal um, would be like a monkey, for sure. That's awesome. Perfect. Thank you so much, Max. Yeah, thank you. <laughs>